We're going to use the Arduino as an embedded computing device, so our emphasis will be on interfacing to the physical world. That interfacing does require special input-output operations, but also a fair amount of typical data manipulation and programming and logic. So in this video, I'll walk through some essential programming voc vocabulary in the context of the Arduino. This will assume some minimal programming exposure, but no special Arduino experience. So the basic workflow here is we're going to build up a sample program step by step and talk through a lot of the elements uh, as a way of getting oriented. So I have a Tinkercad sketch open. Uh, it has just an Arduino and no I.O. because we're going to be doing purely uh, computational ideas. Um, so the way we start out our programs is with a setup function. So let's go through this bit by bit just to see what's happening. Um, a function in programming is a, represents an operation that takes parameters, executes some computation, has some side effects where things happen, and then returns a value. This, in this particular case, there are no arguments and there's no return value. So it's, it's only about a, providing a point for control flow uh, for the side effects. So in this case, the setup is the name of the function, the parentheses, uh, oops, I undid that, uh, the parentheses after it would normally contain the argument list, but in this case it's empty. And void is a C++ keyword that means doesn't return a value. The braces are essential. The braces define a block in, in C++ uh, language, uh, which is the body of the function. And, and inside that block can be other sub-blocks, but all the, all the lines that constitute the body that will execute when the function is invoked. Uh, in this case, we're using one method call to the serial object. This is a predefined Arduino object, which is a representation of the USB serial port. And by calling begin, we're calling the Arduino system to initialize the serial port hardware and the internal software uh, with a given baud rate. The number is, a, is actually a communications rate in bits per second. It has to have certain particular values. I'm using here uh, 115200, which is one of the fastest reliable rates and what I just always use in these sketches. And that determines how fast data will flow between the Arduino chip and the USB chip um, and has something to do with how much data we can get back from the Arduino. So that sort of sets up the one function call there. Let's go ahead and uh, do one more thing, which is to declare a global variable. This is a C++ variable declaration for the value for the variable count. It has type int, which is a predefined integer type, and it gives it a value of 32,700. Uh, the Arduino is an 8-bit chip, so that native integer types are only 16 bits, and so thus they have a fairly low range of values. The ma maximum positive value is 32,767, and about roughly a symmetric negative value. Um, this can sometimes come be, to be a real problem in programming if you need to count or manipulate larger values. So for those, we would use a different long integer type. But the native type is an integer, and it's a very useful type for all sorts of sort of basic iteration and constructs. Um, next, we'll go ahead and introduce a loop function. And now we have at least a complete program. Again, loop is a predefined entry point that the Arduino system calls it has, like the setup function, it's no, given no arguments and it has no return type. So it's, a, it's basically an entry point for calculation or for computation to proceed into. And inside the Arduino firmware, there's a while loop that simply calls this again and again and again and again. Whenever it executes, it's simply re-invoked. And it provides sort of encapsulates this idea that most real-time systems have some essential uh, computation loop that's run uh, endlessly, and that's kind of the basic cycle. You don't have to let it exit. It's possible to have Arduino programs that just enter loop and then act within it, and that's also perfectly legitimate. So once again, we see an open brace and a closed brace to define the block of the, the body, I'm sorry, of the loop function. Uh, and there's three lines. The first is count equals count plus one. Uh, remember, count is our global counter variable that's a, that exists outside the function. Because it was declared globally, uh, it is initialized uh, with its initial value uh, before your program begins executing, and then it will uh, retain the memory of changes as the program proceeds. So this count equals count plus one will increment the count value. It'll uh, read it, add one to it, and store it back in the same location. Serial.println is a operator in the, in the serial object which will print a value, and it can take a lot of different kinds of data and will apply the right printing logic. The key is that the, it's a very straightforward system where you can only print one value at a time, so printLN is a shorthand for 
print and add a line feed to create a, to end the text line. So often if you're, if you're creating a lot of complex output, you have a series of print functions that end with this print line. In this case, we'll pass it a single integer and it will print the value out. And then delay of 100 to delay, so the loop runs approximately 10 times per second. And then the loop will exit. And then in the bottom, I've opened the serial monitor. It's sort of the bottom area of the window down here, serial monitor, uh, which will show us the data that comes back. So if I start the program, we'll see it start to count up. It's counting values, these integer values. And if we wait a few seconds, we'll see it get to the end uh, and hit the max. There we go. We rolled over. Uh, the Arduino, like a lot of these chips, uses uh, two's complement arithmetic technical term, but the thing to note here is when we went beyond the maximum positive value, the chip silently wrapped around to the maximum negative value and then started counting up from the maximum negative value. That's in a, on, on the Arduino, that sort of mathematical overflow doesn't create any kind of exception or other error, it just silently wraps around and then continues executing. And this is a case where uh, the outcome is harmless and expected, but sometimes that can lead to sort of unexpected logic in your programs and it's something to be aware of. Also down in the Arduino, in the simulated Arduino ID here, the Tinkercad IDE, is a graph button that will show a plot of numbers that it gets on the serial port. It's reading the text value that you, as if you would read it back from the serial port, and then dynamically creating a plot to show you the kinds of values that it's seeing. If I stop and restart the simulation, we'll see that initial climb uh, as it gets to the maximum positive value, and then right, cycles around to the maximum negative value, um, and there we see that there's a kind of a weird step function. So this is a, this is a um, basic execution flow using the Arduino loop function as a kind of means for looping. Let's tap back a bit and talk about just some very essential control flow operators that we might need in other cases. Uh, first, we're going to um, going to add a little logic into the middle of this uh, function here. Going to add an if statement. And this will give us a few more things to talk about. And then I'm going to uh, set it running. So while that's running, we can we can discuss this. The statement is if, and then there's a set of parentheses, count equals equals 32767. And then there's another close parentheses and then another set of braces that, that encapsulate another block. The basic structure of this is it's an if statement where it's if, and then there's an expression that has some true or false value. And then there's another uh, block that is executed. For our purposes, it's always good practice to use the braces and have an entire block, although that block might consist of a single single line in some cases. Now we see this kind of sawtooth pattern emerging on the, on, the, on the oscilloscope here and see that the values in the monitor climb to the maximum and then cycle back. So what the if then is doing is if it detects that the count has reached the maximum integer value, it then the, the predicate evaluates to true and then the control flow will enter the block, that's the braces, and perform this assignment operation of resetting the count value back to this 32,700. So this is a way of executing some, some uh, a slight variation in the logic where the value climbs to the maximum and then is reset before it rolls over. It's still using the essential Arduino loop structure that it allows loop to exit and then re-enter as if it were kind of running a whole programmatic cycle. Um, and the reason that works here is because the count value is a global variable. It's defined outside of the function, and so it retains memory of its value um, all the time, even as functions exit and are re-entered. Now let's, um, this is also a useful structure just to have a, a way to create some logic in the form of an if-then. Um, now we're going to uh, take that out and use the loop function in a slightly different way. So I'm going to um, shift examples here to introduce a while loop. And to spare the type, I'm going to kind of paste it in here. But now we can see a slightly different logic. So let's read through this, this new little bit of code. So if we look inside the, the, the loop value now, there's a, there's a sub loop inside of the loop function. And the, the format here is the while keyword, and then an expression, which is a predicate that it can value to true or false followed by a block with, defined by the braces. In this case, the brace has the three lines within it. So the logic of this is, while count is less than some value, in this case, the maximum value, uh, while that evaluates to true, then the, the Arduino will enter the and execute the code inside the block. So as long as the value is within range, less than 32,767, it will increment count by one, print the value, and do the delay. 
since count is now uh, incrementing again, it will climb up one by one to the maximum value, and eventually the while will then evaluate to false. The count will be equal to 32767, and then it won't execute the block. Instead, it'll go past to the next line of code, which is line 5, which resets count to 32700. At that point, loop will enter, I'm sorry, loop function will exit, and then immediately be re-entered, and this will all happen again. So if we start that, we should see similar behavior. Uh, the, the serial monitor is counting up, and the plot is climbing, and this is now within the while loop. And then when it gets to the end, the resets count, the loop function exits, and then re-enters. So now the loop function is actually running much less often. It's only running once for the entire cycle of the waveform, and the while is, is what is regulating the count up one by one. That's a very common structure to have, a kind of conditional loop where there's some kind of variable that's changing in the middle. So there's a, there's a very convenient shorthand for that, which is a for loop. Um, and that's what we'll look at right now. So I'm going to now, once again, sort of excise the body here of my loop function and insert some, a slightly different structure. We're still using the same count value, uh, and we're still getting uh, essentially the same behavior. We're getting a, a count that goes up uh, to the limit and then uh, cycles back down to the initial value. And the program dynamics are very similar. Loop is entered, some waveform is generated until it's done, and then it's exited, and then loop re-enters and does the next cycle. In this case, though, we're using a very common structure, which is a for loop. Um, and it, is, it doesn't actually add any additional capability over the previous example using the while loop, but it is a very con convenient syntax and shorthand for uh, sort of writing the same ideas in a more compact way. So uh, what we see here is there's a four and then an expression with three terms. Count equals 32,700, and then a semicolon, and then a second term, which is a conditional, again, count less than some value, and then a third term, which is an expression with an assignment. It has that same increment, count equals count plus one. After that triplet of expressions is uh, a block defined by braces, uh, the curly braces. Um, and inside that is the, is the print line and delay. So the three terms of the count are always an initializer that is acted on once um, that, in this case, assigns a value to count. The second term is a predicate. And as long as that predicate is true, then the four will continue to run. And then the third is an is a update expression that is executed um, right uh, before the loop resumes. And then the body is, uh, is executed sort of once per cycle. So this is a very con conventional form where the uh, basically is used as an incrementing counter to go up by one. But there are many other ways that the for structure can be used. And in all these cases, it's an initializer, a predicate, and then some kind of expression uh, assignment or some kind of evaluate expression that happens once per cycle. Any one of the three can be omitted. Uh, sometimes you'll see uh, just a blank space and a semicolon, and then that simply that part of the for structure is not actually used. So just in the synopsis, we've looked at the essential C, C uh, sorry, we've looked at the essential C syntax for uh, some function declarations that in this case don't take arguments but do provide entry points for control flow. Talked a little bit about control flow through setup and loop. Talked a little about sort of globals, assignment, uh, f then structures, while loops, and for loops. And these are all essential idioms that we'll use a lot in our programming.